I'm Jimmy Chang, and we're here to talk about limits with a radical in the denominator and numerator. Now, oftentimes when it comes to finding limits, it's a pretty straightforward process, but a lot of folks tend to shy away when they see radicals there. Now, let's do a, an example and you'll see how this works. And you'll find that radicals in the numerator and denominator actually don't affect things too much, depending on what kind of uh, limit that you're trying to find. So let's just say you want to find the limit as x approaches 1 of, let's just say, square root of 4x plus 1 over square root of x minus 1 half, let's just say. Now, what you want to do is to find the limit as x approaches 1, you want to see if you can plug in the 1 into both the numerator and denominator and see what you have. So you have square root of 4 times 1 plus 1 over square root of 1 minus 1 half. So at this point, you have square root of 5 over square root of 1 half. Now at this point, because they're both square roots, you can write it as one radical, so you have 5 over 1 half, and 5 divided by half is like saying 5 times 2 over 1, so that's going to be the square root of 10. So as you can tell, when you have limits and you want to find limits with radicals in the denominator and numerator, it's kind of the same way. The only difference is what kind of limits are you trying to find, and you may want to make the adjustments accordingly. So, I'm Jimmy Chang, and that's a brief demonstration on how to find limits with a radical in the denominator and numerator.